My name is Chuck Simon, and I would like to explain to you the purpose of the FJMC K-Rib Initiative. What is happening to our families is the most pressing item on the agenda of the Jewish community and the conservative authority movement. Welcome to the team that's going to make a difference. The purpose of this film is to explain the nature of the FJMC K-Rib Initiative, to explain and prepare you, the lay leader or leaders, who we refer to as k consultants, and your rabbi for your training experience, and to provide you with sufficient background information so that you and your rabbi can create a plan to make your congregation a more welcoming one. What is the FJMC k initiative and how is it organized? Well, in the late 1990s, FJMC leadership approached me and they were very concerned because many of their children who were marrying and deciding to affiliate with the Jewish community were affiliating with the Reformed community. And the challenge was, how do we stop this hemorrhaging? What do we have to do? We wanted to change that address because research indicated that when people began to search for a congregation, the first place they looked was at a congregation that was similar to the one in which they were raised. That means that a person who grew up in a conservative synagogue in San Diego who moved to Boston when they began to look for a synagogue would first look for a cons at a conservative synagogue in Boston. And of course, if they were not welcomed, they would either go to a reform synagogue or would go no place at all. The first thing we did was we went to the other arms of the movement, the Jewish Theological Seminary, the United Synagogue, and the Rabbinical Assembly. And they asked, we asked them if they wanted to work with us, to partner with us. And in all cases, the answer was, we're doing the best we can. We're doing all that can be done. In other words, no. FJMC leadership considered itself the marketing arm of the conservative authority movement and felt that no was not an acceptable answer. And so we decided to do some field testing. It began in Toronto in the late 1990s. Now, for those of you who know the Toronto Jewish community, one could say that they're a little bit to the right of Attila the Hun, certainly the more traditional arm of our movement. And we figured that if we talked about intermarriage there and it was successful, we'd know we hit a nerve. It's like that song that Frank Sinatra sang, if I can make it here, I can make it anywhere. We were not prepared for the reactions we received when a rabbi got up and talked about his issues with intermarriaging, intermarriage and the issues in his own family. People emoted in the aisles. Men and women literally were tearing their chests and their ass, beating their breasts and saying, I finally have someone to talk to. And we realized we had struck an, impo an important nerve. And we spent the next ten year, two years writing lesson plans, field testing them, producing articles, developing strategies, studying what the scholars uh, were to tell us about what was happening to the Jewish family. And two years later in Florida at our biennial convention, we invited 24 rabbis to come and sit in on a three hour session, different workshops devoted to different aspects of what was happening to our families. And we asked them to sit like flies on the walls. That means they couldn't speak. You know how hard that is for rabbis to sit in for three hours and not talk, and that's their thing. But they did it afterwards, we met together, and I asked them, what did they think? What did they learn? And they said, we were, we're shocked. We didn't realize how much pain was out there. We didn't realize how, much, how we were held in such fear and, and how people looked at us. We have to do something about this. And out of that came the Kerub Initiative. And we began at that point to bring together groups of rabbis for 24 hours just to discuss intermarriage issues, how they're handling it, what the issues are. And after several years of this, we realized that rabbis needed a partner. And so we began to ask them to recommend men first and then men and women later on because we, at that point we realized that intermarriage has to be understood and worked with by gender. And, they went, and we brought men and women together for a weekend of training and of study and of practicing. Uh, and then we sent them back to their rabbis to develop their own, their own strategic plan of how to make their synagogues more welcoming one. While we were doing this, we developed a resource library which is online and can be accessed by any FJMC consultant consisting of sample flyers, programs, essays, a wealth of material of what other colleagues and other congregations are doing all across North America. Over the years we experimented with different formats of training but we've come to the conclusion that the weekend training format is the most effective. It builds relationships, it provides an opportunity for people from many different congregations to sit with a local rabbi and to brainstorm and learn about that rabbi's vision of how they're going to make their synagogue more welcoming. And it gives us the time to do what we need to do to send them back to their home communities. Today, more than 250 rabbis 
and over 100 men and women have gone through our training programs. And now we're beginning to expand it and because the issues are even more serious. What are the premises of the Keiru Initiative? First one is that the culture of each synagogue is unique. What works in one place will not necessarily work someplace else. The second is that the rabbi is the Mara de Atra, the arbiter of the law, and that the rabbi's comfort level needs to be respected. Third, the decisions of religious policy are governed by Jewish law, and in many cases in the conservative movement, governed by the Committee on Jewish Law and Standards of the Rabbinical Assembly, but ultimately the decisions are made by the local rabbi. We want to teach people that there's a difference between custom and law. This is a conversation you need to have with your rabbi. And the reason we requested you watch this film together is because your rabbi needs to help you understand what is custom and what is law. Custom can be changed. Law is much more difficult. For example, when one stands on the bima, or where one stands on the bima, is a question of custom. Who gets to recite the blessings before and after the Torah? It fulfills a legal obligation, and that's a question of law. The care of initiative is not about attracting new members. It should not be a subset of the membership committee. It's about transforming your synagogue into a more welcoming, engaging place. It's about helping your members, your parents and grandparents, adjust to a changing world. It's about engaging adult children so that whomever they choose to marry or with whom to partner, they raise a Jewish family. Keruv is not about conversion, though in many instances, a welcoming, engaging community might more readily foster conversion. The National Jewish Population Survey of 2000 indicates that most conversions today take place after a decade of marriage. So by placing a barrier and saying conversion is, a, is, is a necessary before a marriage or before being welcomed into our community is creating a, a very difficult situation. In a Brandeis study a decade ago that compared intermarried couples with inmarried couples in terms of their observance found that their observance level was the same if they belonged to a synagogue. It's not who gets to stand under the chuppah, it's about where, you know, who is associated and affiliated and engaged with the Jewish community. Kerub is about raising Jewish families, and in order to do that, each congregation re requires a team. The rabbi has the behind-the-scenes quarterback and a committed lay leadership. Finally, what will you learn at the Kerub training? You will learn how to position your clergy so the congregation knows they are accessible. You will learn what the entry points are in this congregation and what strategies need to be created so those entry points are maximized. You'll be provided with suggested language that could attract intermarriage. And when a couple leaves your congregation and goes to a reformed congregation, more often than not, so go the parents, we will help you understand how to resist that process. What is happening to our families is the most pressing item on the agenda of the Jewish community and the conservative Missouri movement. I want to welcome you to the team that's going to make a difference.